Hello gamers! On the left side you can see performance on all settings maxed out. On the right side, performance with Gamers Club optimizations. As always in my graphical guides, I exchange part of gained performance to play on much higher resolutions using NVIDIA DLDSR, which in short allows you to play on higher resolution than your display. And this, in combination with DLSS4, provides incredible image quality. You can find instructions how to enable both technologies in the last part of this video. Ok, let's go with the settings. Here on the bottom, you can see values of gained FPS and VRAM, always in relation to the highest possible setting, which is experimental. Object quality determines draw distance for assets in the game. My recommendation is high because we gain solid 9% of performance with not that much visual improvement over experimental. For particles, I couldn't really find any differences. Honestly, I think this setting doesn't even function right now. There is no difference in performance either. My recommendation is Ultra just in case this option is disabling some effect. Lighting is another option that even if it works, Differences are so subtle that I couldn't even find them. Global illumination seems to drastically reduce performance with little to no benefit. I checked multiple instances and did not find any significant differences that would justify this performance cost. I've noticed that there is a little bit more light reaching the interiors when using higher settings. That's it. My recommendation is to set it to the medium. This way we gain, depending on the scenario, up to 20% performance without any significant loss in image quality. Post-processing quality is usually responsible for effects like depth of field, motion blur or bloom. It clearly impacts performance, but I only notice differences in the saturation of bloom. I'm aware that the first graphical options showcased in my guide are a bit disappointing, because they either don't work or are barely noticeable, but the rest of the settings are much more impactful, both visually and in terms of performance. My recommendation is high as it provides only a bit less performance than low. Here you can see a little bit better the differences between low and experimental. Ok, finally some interesting goodies. Shader quality seems to influence a few various effects. For example, here we can see that screen space reflections on no lack the water effect that the medium setting has. Interestingly, that effect does not scale or change beyond that. Additionally, here we can see how shader quality slightly, but still, affects the accuracy of ambient occlusion. The last interaction I found is with the cascade shadows and some softening filter on it. That's why my recommendation is high, for a small performance gain and to preserve the quality of the various in-game effects. Talking about shadows is by far the most demanding option among all available settings, both for VRAM and frame rate. Low is very blurry, and medium start to cast some more defined shadows. High, ultra and experimental look actually quite similar.
An additional problem with the low setting is that it doesn't cast shadows for foliage, making it look flat. On top of that, cascade shadows have such a low resolution from a distance that they flicker and show some artifacts. That's why my peak is high, which still provides a very solid performance uplift and looks very close to the shadows on max. Another question is but why not medium if it's already close to high, ultra and experimental? As you can see problem is that medium, despite looking ok outside, just like low doesn't cast some shadows indoor, which of course disqualifies it. Testing textures, I quickly realized that there is only two types, LOD textures for a distant objects and high resolution textures. Changing the texture quality option only modifies the distance and area in which the engine is allowed to load the full texture. After restarting the game and playing it for a few minutes, the game reached almost 8GB of VRAM. But remember that the recording software is using around 700 megabytes of my VRAM and I play on the 1620p. The experimental setting exceeded 8 GB, that's why my recommendation for people with 8 GB of VRAM is high. Volumetric effects are responsible for the accuracy of the god rays and in some games also the quality of clouds. When testing whether the clouds in the Kingdom Come are volumetric, which they don't seem to be, I noticed that these settings can be quite taxing on performance. That's why my recommendation is high, as it still looks very good. Vegetation detail is entirely about geo distance for foliage, but beware, the higher the setting, the higher the CPU usage. Just like in the first game, foliage swaying in the wind is calculated by the CPU. The more foliage there is to sway, the more CPU power is required. If you are CPU bottlenecked, this is the first setting to cut. My recommendation is high. Character detail was quite a surprise. Low, medium and high looks pretty much the same, while ultra and experimental actually look worse than the previous settings. The two highest settings also suffers from noticeable NPC quality pop-in. Just look at her dress on the right side. Okay, it's finally time to sum up a little bit all settings together. I'm playing on these settings myself with the newest DLSS on balance. To turn on DLSS 4 you have to open your NVIDIA app and in the graphics tab, find Kingdom Come Deliverance. My profile is back, but here on the bottom you should have the same options like I have in my Cyberpunk profile. Presets K and G are the newest transformer model for DLSS. If you also have backed Kingdom Come profile, there is another way. Download NVIDIA Inspector link in the description, open it, in search window type Kingdom, scroll down and turn on enable DLL override, then switch preset to preset K. Now just apply the changes and done, when stationary you won't see much of a difference between old CNN model and transformer. In the most problematic movement type for the older DLSS model, which in my opinion is horizontal motion, the transformer model seems to perform better, but at the cost of 10% performance. Ok, additionally I use DLDSR which allows me to play at 1620p while having only a 1080p monitor. If you would also like to try DLDSR, open again NVIDIA app, in graphics open global settings tab and here tick all resolution multipliers that you are interested in. Obviously I recommend deep learning versions, which downscales with better image quality. I also set up smoothness for myself to zero, but if image is too sharp for you, try something between 20 and 30. 
Now, if you want to unlock cutscenes frame times beyond 30, go to the engine folder inside your main game folder. Please make a backup of your engine pack file. Then open it using WinRAR or 7-zip, whatever you use. Go to config, then CVAR overrides. Open custom CFG file. Now change SysMax FPS from 30 to 0 and save the file. Remember to confirm changes in the pack file. Now all cutscenes should have unlocked FPS. Keep in mind that in case of game update, you may have to do it again. That's everything I prepared for this guide. If you found this video useful, please consider subscribing to my channel. Also feel free to leave feedback in the comment section below. Thank you for watching and see you soon!